The world of Lock and Key is probably best described as dark fantasy, and I guess the main allure of the show is the magical keys, you know, that grant the characters of the show fantastical powers. And this video is going to cover the origins of the keys, as well as a few things about the keys that aren't really explained in the show. But before we start today's video, we want to say thanks to our sponsor, NordVPN. If you need a VPN, Nord is the industry leader. Stay safe browsing for all of the content that you enjoy, and thanks to key issues, enjoy massive discounts when you use our coupon code. Save 81% at nordvpn.com slash keyissues, or use code keyissues and get two amazing gifts. Four extra months with a three-year plan in the NordPass password manager app for free. Basically worth almost $200. Now back to the video. So keep in mind that this video is probably going to feature some definite spoilers for future seasons of the show, but I will say this, I anticipate that if you didn't want to know, you probably wouldn't be watching. So back to the point of the video, magical keys. During the American Revolutionary War, freedom-fighting American rebels found a doorway within a vast cave system underneath the site where the future Locke family estate, Key House, would reside. When the revolutionary soldiers take up residency in these caves, they petition a local man named Locke to drain the caves so that they can venture farther in to store goods and supplies. However, once the caves are drained, they stumble upon markings that resemble a doorway. Slowly, over time, over let's say the period of a few days, the markings change and they start to resemble an actual doorway, almost enticing the soldiers to open it. And look, I'm not perfect, I don't know about you, but if I'm down in a cave system trying to escape the red coats and there's some creepy door that's slowly turning into a real door enticing me to try and open it, yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot, I'll dip my toes in the water. So eventually, the soldiers take the bait and the doorways open, and when it opens, we see this horrible Lovecraftian otherworld kind of spew forth from within the door. Once open, this doorway spawns countless unknown parasitic demons that start to flood through its opening, and the first demon attaches itself to the captain of the garrison, and he immediately starts killing other people, as you do when you're infected with a demon. However, due to the fact that these demons are symbiotic, they can't survive in our world without a host. And when I say symbiotic, I mean that they need a human being to survive. Think of Venom from Spider-Man, except the Venom symbiote can kind of survive without a host for a long period of time, but these ones can't. Therefore, one of two things happens. Either the demon attaches itself to a human being and lives within them, or they fall into a smoldering mess on the ground where they immediately turn into a hard metal referred to as Whispering Iron. A young locksmith living during this era named Benjamin Locke, who's also a descendant of the Locke who emptied the cave system, allowing the doorway to first be visible, attempts to seal the doorway using his lock-making abilities, but finds no earthly material can bind the doorway closed for longer than a few seconds. Benjamin Locke notices that the material seems to be whispering to him, and when he held it to its head, he gets visions of what he needs to do. Using the whispering metal, he crafts a master lock and a key with an omega symbol on it. He places the lock on the Lovecraftian demon door and locks it with the Omega key. The material is somehow able to hold the door closed. He then begins the process of reinforcing the doorway so that no one can ever open it again. This doorway is referred to as the Black Door. And as I mentioned before, he does also craft a key with the Omega symbol on it, and without this key, the doorway to the alternate dimension will not open. If any other key is used in this doorway, it simply opens to more cave space where you can, you know, store old-timey things. I don't know what they had back then, like muskets and some fur. I don't know, potatoes. Benjamin then goes on to forge a number of other keys out of the remaining whispering iron that came into this world when the doorway was originally opened. These keys are all outlined in another video of ours, and essentially these keys are kind of the corpses of extra-dimensional beings that attempted to invade our world. And because of the fact that this material is not native to our universe, it possesses abilities that are not native to our world, and this is kind of referred to as magic in this universe. Over time, additional magical enchantments are made to the keys and the key house, and one of the more interesting magical elements is known as the Hans Riffle effect. This was a magical enchantment placed on the key house property that causes anybody over the age of 18 to forget about the magical keys and their abilities associated with them. 
The goal of this enchantment is to prevent the keys from landing in the hands of adults who would undoubtedly use them for their own gain. I know I would, I would immediately start messing with my own brain, I'd get rid of my anxiety, I'd put a lot of guitar playing skill in there, I'd probably learn a bunch of things that I should have learned in high school and college that I forgot or drank my way through anyway back to the video. A side effect of the Hans Riffle rule is that the whispering of the keys can only be heard by children, and specifically younger children. It's implied in the show and in the comics that the older you are, the less pure of heart you are, and therefore the less likely you are to hear a key whispering to you. And frankly, that's probably a good thing because after a long day of work, I don't want to come home and have my old creepy house start whispering to me and then I got to go hunt down a key and then I got to figure out what it does. The whole thing, it just sounds like a lot of work. And if I'm not getting paid to do this, let's let some children do it. Maybe they'll, you know, cause a trans-dimensional doorway to open that kills us all, but maybe not. Who knows? It's also not 100% understood how Benjamin Locke is able to craft these keys and their abilities, but it does seem to be implied that most of them are crafted in the late 1770s, and it does seem like the person who does the forging is able to kind of wish for the abilities that they want the key to have. And that is it for the origin of the keys and kind of where they come from. And one thing I want to leave you with is to not necessarily think of the keys as keys as much as they are magical spells and abilities. Thank you guys for watching this video. This has been Nick with Key Issues, and please remember to like the video. It helps us out tremendously. Also, feel free to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And remember the motto, lock and key over everything.